Do you hear about that fucking object that's hurtling towards Earth? Scientists give chilling update on mysterious interstellar object racing through our solar system as they warn it's even bigger than we thought. Provide a chilling update on a mysterious interstellar object that's racing through our solar system. Professor Avi Loeb, theoretical physicist and cosmologist from Harvard University, suggested the object could be an alien spacecraft. Astronomers in Hawaii have released what's being called the most structurally revealing imagery of interstellar comet 3I Atlas. These images, captured by amateur observer Kalopa Stars from the dark skies of Hanaka'a, Hawaii, have provided a definitive view of a rare and controversial optical phenomenon. A razor-thin anti-tail projecting toward the sun, these stacked exposures processed using advanced AI refinement techniques Astronomers expected a bright and dramatic sight when their telescopes finally regained view of 3I Atlas on November 5, 2025. They believed the comet would show a long, glowing tail because it had just passed its closest point to the sun, a stage when every known comet becomes more active and releases dust and gas into space. Instead, they saw something that froze the entire control room. There was no tail, no spreading coma, and no cloud of dust. All the instruments detected were a single tight point of light, a result that broke every basic rule of how a comet should behave after perihelion. This strange silence forced scientists to confront a disturbing possibility. Something had happened during the three weeks when the comet was hidden behind the sun, out of sight, and beyond the reach of every observing tool on Earth. What exactly could shut down a comet at the very moment it should have been at its brightest? The setup begins with the speed of 3I Atlas, because it entered the inner solar system racing between Earth and Jupiter at about 129,742 Malapraeus, making it the fastest interstellar object ever recorded. Before it reached perihelion, astronomers watched it grow more active every week as a dust coma expanded around the nucleus and gas emissions increased in strength. Images also showed a young tail beginning to stretch behind it, and in August, the object even produced an unusual anti-tail that pointed toward the sun due to slow-moving ice grains. By early October, the color of the comet shifted toward an impossibly blue tone, a change that confused observers who knew normal comets always appear redder than sunlight. All activity seemed ready to peak, yet the comet reached perihelion on October 29th while completely hidden behind the sun forcing every Earth-based telescope to lose sight for three weeks. When it returned on November 5th, the transformation was total, because the previously active object now appeared as a silent point of light, with no visible signs of energy. Current brightness measurements show a steady fade from magnitude 16 to magnitude 20 by February 2026, and the object will become untrackable by June. The real question now is how much scientists can uncover during the final four months before this ancient visitor disappears forever. The central idea of this chapter begins with the strange silence of 3I Atlas, because a comet should always grow more active after it passes perihelion. This behavior is one of the simplest rules of thermal physics, and it has been confirmed through many decades of observations in the solar system. When a comet moves close to the sun, intense heat strikes its surface and begins to travel deeper into the interior. This heat does not disappear once the comet moves away, because thermal energy continues sinking downward through layers of dust, rock, and frozen material. Scientists call this process thermal conduction, and it ensures that deeper ice keeps sublimating long after the comet leaves the hottest part of its orbit. This usually creates the brightest stage of a comet's life, since the inside remains warm even while the surface cools. For this reason, Astronomers expected 3I Atlas to become extremely active when it returned from behind the sun. The final images captured before the blackout supported this expectation because its brightness was rising steadily. The dust coma around the nucleus had been expanding, which suggested that deeper layers of material were breaking apart. Gas emissions were also increasing, and these changes usually mean the inner regions have reached temperatures high enough to release more volatile compounds. A developing tail had already begun to stretch outward, and its early shape suggested it would become much larger after perihelion. All available data showed that the comet was preparing for its most intense phase. This is why the silence that followed shocked the entire scientific community. When the blackout began on October 15th, 
every Earth-based telescope lost sight of the comet for three weeks as it slipped behind the sun. During those weeks, researchers reviewed the last measurements again and again, trying to predict how dramatic the post-perihelion outburst would be. Many expected a bright tail stretching millions of miles along with strong dust and gas activity. But on November 5th, the object returned as nothing more than a compact point of light. There were no jets, no dust, and no signs of sublimation anywhere near the nucleus. Even the weak activity recorded in early observations had disappeared completely, leaving an object that looked more like a quiet asteroid than a comet still carrying stored heat. This transformation made the mystery even deeper, because no known model of comet behavior can explain a complete shutdown at that stage. A comet cannot cool instantly after receiving extreme heat, and the inner layers should have still been warming during that exact period. Researchers compared this to a pot of water reaching boiling temperature, and then suddenly turning into ice the moment the stove is turned off. Such a reaction has no physical support, especially for an object filled with frozen material. This unusual behavior forced astronomers to consider explanations that went far beyond normal expectations. One idea proposed that the comet might have broken apart during the blackout, leaving pieces too small to show strong activity. Another theory suggested that the surface could have become sealed under a thick crust created by intense heating, trapping all remaining gases inside. A third possibility argued that the comet had exhausted all of its volatile ice and had nothing left to release. Each explanation describes a different kind of catastrophic event, and each one changes how scientists understand the nature of interstellar objects. The challenge now is deciding which scenario fits the evidence most accurately, because each one leaves questions that have not yet been answered. New observations will help researchers narrow the possibilities, but every new detail adds more tension to the mystery that began during the blackout. This leads back to the central question that drives this investigation. Did 3i Atlas break apart, seal itself, or lose everything during the one moment when no one on Earth could watch? The second chapter begins with the three main explanations scientists are using to understand the sudden silence of 3i Atlas. Because the comet's behavior after perihelion created a mystery that normal models could not explain. The first idea focuses on fragmentation, which suggests that the nucleus may have shattered under the intense thermal stress it experienced near the sun. This event could have happened during the blackout, and the pieces would have been too small to generate a visible tail or a bright coma. Fragmentation is a known process in comet science, and several examples support this possibility. A major case appeared in 2020 when Comet C2019 Y4 Atlas completely disintegrated into dozens of tiny fragments, leaving only a faint debris cloud behind. Another example comes from the interstellar comet Borisov, which lost about 0.1% of its total mass in a single event during its approach to the Sun. These cases show that thermal stress can break a comet apart without warning, and the same type of structural failure could have happened to 3i Atlas. If the nucleus shattered, then the quiet point of light seen after the blackout would make sense, because each remaining piece would be too small to maintain strong outgassing. Many astronomers believe this explanation is possible, yet they also note that the pre-blackout data did not show a sudden drop in brightness, which usually appears before a comet breaks apart. This detail creates doubt, so the fragmentation theory cannot fully answer the mystery on its own. The second idea is total volatile depletion which argues that all sublimitable ice inside the comet may have been burned away during the extreme heat of perihelion. Volatile ice includes carbon dioxide, water, and carbon monoxide, and these materials normally drive the outgassing that creates tails and comas. If these were completely exhausted, then nothing would remain to produce any kind of visible activity. This theory describes a comet that has turned into an inert object made mostly of rock and dust, unable to release gas even when heated. Some scientists believe this scenario is possible because the comet produced strong activity in the weeks before perihelion, which suggests that the shallow layers of ice may have been consumed quickly. However, depletion raises another problem because deeper layers usually remain untouched and thermal conduction should keep them active long after the surface cools. If all volatiles disappeared, 
The comet must have burned through every reservoir of ice, including the deepest pockets, which seems unlikely when the blackout lasted only three weeks. This detail makes the second theory incomplete, and scientists continue questioning whether total depletion alone can explain the complete silence of 3i Atlas. The third explanation is mantling, which suggests that radiation-processed organics on the surface melted and fused during perihelion, creating a sealed crust similar to a layer of cosmic asphalt. This crust would trap all the remaining volatiles under a hardened shell, preventing them from escaping into space even if they continue to heat up. Mantling is known to happen in old comets, and some extinct comets inside the solar system show similar sealed surfaces that hide deeper layers of ice. If 3i Atlas created such a crust during perihelion, then the object would appear completely inactive, even though its interior still contains frozen material. The mantling hypothesis explains the sudden shutdown more cleanly than the first two theories, because a sealed crust could form within hours under extreme heating, and the blackout window gave enough time for this process to complete. This idea also fits the fact that the comet did not show a brightness collapse before the blackout because mantling does not always change the light curve before the transformation occurs. However, mantling still leaves questions because scientists want direct evidence of cracks or variations on the surface that would confirm the presence of a crust. To address these questions, the Hubble Space Telescope completed a new observation run three days before the transcript's timeline, and its results will help confirm or reject major fragmentation in the coming weeks. The outcome will guide researchers toward the most likely explanation, yet the mystery still depends on details that no one has fully understood. This leads to the central question at the end of this chapter. Which of these explanations matches the impossible silence we are seeing now? The chemistry of 3i Atlas became one of the most shocking parts of this investigation, because the measurements collected before perihelion revealed a composition no one had ever recorded in a comet. The data showed that 87% of its gas output came from carbon dioxide, while only 4% came from water vapor. This finding surprised researchers, because comets are normally built from water ice mixed with smaller amounts of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. The imbalance in 3i Atlas went far beyond a simple difference in proportions and created a ratio that sat 6.1 standard deviations beyond normal comet values. In scientific terms, a result that far outside the expected range means something extraordinary shaped the comet's chemistry. The production rates strengthened the mystery even more because the comet released 129K of a carbon dioxide every second and only 6.6K of a water vapor. These numbers contradicted every formation model used to describe how comets develop in young planetary systems. Standard models predict that 70 to 80% of a comet's volatile content should be water ice, since water condenses easily in cold regions of a forming solar system. Carbon dioxide normally plays a supporting role because it freezes at lower temperatures and exists in smaller amounts. Nothing in those models explains how a comet could end up dominated by carbon dioxide while carrying so little water. This contradiction forced scientists to search for an explanation that did not come from ordinary processes inside a system like ours. The absence of visible activity forced researchers to look for explanations that match the physics but remain hidden from direct observation. One idea suggested that the comet could be releasing hydrogen gas, which is invisible from Earth because the ultraviolet wavelengths needed to detect it are blocked by the atmosphere. Hydrogen outgassing would produce real thrust without creating any structure that telescopes could see and this made the explanation possible. Another idea pointed toward heat stored deep inside the comet during perihelion, which could still be driving sublimation from sealed pockets beneath the surface. In this case, the gas would escape through cracks too small to create visible jets, but strong enough to influence the motion of the nucleus. A third possibility argued that the thrust pushing 3i Atlas today may have been created before perihelion, and the change in velocity simply continues along the path, even though the jets have stopped. This idea suggests that the comet received a strong impulse during the blackout and now carries that momentum into the outer solar system. All three explanations propose hidden forces, and each one tries to match the data without breaking known physical laws. But the comet's path made the mystery deeper because its orbital eccentricity measured 6.14, 
the most extreme hyperbolic trajectory ever recorded in an interstellar object. Such a high value means 3i Atlas is not gravitationally bound to the Sun in any way, and no encounter within the solar system could have given it this speed. It entered fast, and it is leaving even faster, with an acceleration that scientists can measure but cannot directly observe. This strange motion makes the coming months even more important, because the final chance to test every theory will happen in March 2026, during the Jupiter flyby. The comet will pass only 0.36 astronomical units from Jupiter, a distance close enough for the planet's tidal forces to stress any sealed crust or weak structure. If 3i Atlas formed a mantle during perihelion, then the gravitational pull from Jupiter might crack the surface and allow trapped gas to escape again. A sudden rise in activity would confirm that the comet sealed itself, matching the mantling explanation. If nothing changes during or after the flyby, then the depletion theory becomes the most likely answer, because a comet without volatiles has nothing left to release. However, if the nucleus fractured during the blackout and 3i Atlas is really a cluster of fragments, then Jupiter's gravity will pull the pieces farther apart. In that case, telescopes will see multiple sources instead of one, and fragmentation will be confirmed within days. The flyby represents the last experimental test before the comet fades beyond detection, and every possible outcome will rewrite how scientists understand interstellar visitors. Each theory will stand or collapse based on what Jupiter reveals, when 3i Atlas passes through its gravitational reach. This brings the chapter to its final question. Jupiter will reveal which theory survives and which ones collapse, but what will the sky show when the moment finally arrives? 3i Atlas is fading by one-tenth of a magnitude every week, and soon its light will drop below the limits of almost every telescope on Earth. Only the Vera Rubin Observatory can still follow its path, yet even that instrument will lose sight of it by June as the object slips back into the dark. Scientists know this. Comet carries chemistry shaped inside a stellar system that died billions of years ago, and every observation may be the last chance to study material older than the Sun. The next four months are the final window to uncover answers before the mystery becomes unreachable forever. What happens during the Jupiter flyby will decide which theory stands, and once 3i Atlas disappears, no new data will ever come again. So now the question passes to you. What do you think caused the tail to vanish? Fragmentation, depletion, or catastrophic crust formation?